I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Souls Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in a break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. What's up, dude? Edward. How you feeling, brother? Great, man. How are you? I'm good, dude. We are continuing on with just a list of really funny, on-brand comedians, buddy. This comedian not only has a really funny album out called I Just Look Like This, but uh, he's also a diversity hire here. At <laughs> 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 Give it up for Chris Brown. Yo, hey. what's, up, what's going on, Thanks man? Thanks coming, bro. What is your craziest day job? Let's start there. Craziest day job? Uh, I used to be a dishwasher Ooh. at Red Lobster. Ooh, nice, yeah, yeah, nice, yeah. nice. Fresh out of high school. and uh, Where are you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah I was wondering yeah. what your accent was. Like Tallahassee? No, that's that's uh, Georgia. Yep, Atlanta, okay. Georgia. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny. I just thought about another job I had that was that was. Well, dishwasher, job. Let me, because Ed has been a dishwasher. Oh, dude, I've been. Ed has mm-hmm. been. I've done all the restaurants. And, and before you, I feel like he might be the only person I've met that was a dishwasher without being an ex-con. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, that's a lot. That's an ex-con job. Yeah. yeah. So at, at Red Lobster, like you're working, like on a Friday night, you you have like a t- you another guy you work with. And it was funny too. So that the guy that was he was a uh, the 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 senior dishwasher. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Supervisory. Uh, yeah, the supervisor. <laughs> this was the apprentice. Exactly. <laughs> But the craziest part about that, your he, mentor, you exactly. Might say. <laughs> he was Down syndrome too, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah. so, like, I, I was seventeen years old. I, I was raised right, so I wasn't. But it was he. he you could tell he liked having that power over. Oh you know? yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So yeah, he sure. was like constantly checking me and micromanaging like, you. Yeah, and it was kind of hard because it's just like, yo, bro, you know. And I'm not to. You know, but I just remember that was like one of my craziest jobs because he well, was constantly like well, let chopping me, me you. off and shit. Yeah. You have Down syndrome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, how long did it take you to learn to get to the job? <laughs> You're gonna tell me? I, I get that you have more. You have more seniority. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it I was. Ar- uh, See, I have no like. I, uh, you have I, no. I, I, you I, have I, no an argument with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Josh would be in there like breaking plates. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but that's exactly how it was, though, man. And I was 17 years old, and I wasn't trying to. But I was. It was times when I'd be like, "Yo, bro." You got. I mean. <laughs> On my worst days, like, <laughs> so like I remember that was hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You're, so, su- you're, you're superior, having a severe mental disability. Uh, yeah. And you're a fully functional man at seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. And then exactly. How, how the managers treat it? How the managers treat it? Well, they like, knew what, it, and they used to be paid. Like, yo, I know you, Dylan. His name was Curtis. Like, no, I know Curtis can be a little rough, but you know, <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, everybody, because he was hard on me, like hard, hard. Yeah. Like a, like, he, like, what, like, what like, like, like a, like a really good coach, hard. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. radio. Yeah. Like, He's like, listen, yeah. listen, I see talent in you. That's why I'm hard on you. I know you can be a better yeah. dishwasher. But, but I'm going to tell you one thing, though. He was cold. He had it down. Yeah, so he, he was probably really He knew good. what he was he doing. He loved it. Yeah, yeah, and it was, it was a lot thing. of stuff. And then I was 17. I wasn't trying to yeah, be dishwasher. Yeah. You know, that I was his future thing. future in dishwasher. Exactly, like man. Curtis did. <laughs> You're not passionate about getting the crumbs off these plates, you know? So I just remember being like, yo, bro, I'm not going to be here long. It's not that serious. Like, I would love to get fired. I'm trying to get fired. Why that job and why not another job? Well, you know, what's funny, though, so I just, I left high school early, right? And I left high school early because I was changing a, a bunch of different high schools, so I had too many credits. So I didn't have to go my last so semester. So you had to graduate. Whoa. So you didn't have to get a GED. You got your diploma. Yeah, I got my diploma. So it was like, yo, you, you can walk. You early? Yeah, I graduated early, but it wasn't because I was like, you know, gifted academically it was just a like a mix up in credits it's like yeah. when you, when you <laughs> transfer all these different school <laughs> systems we figured that out with the dishwasher part <laughs> we put that together yeah, we with, figured, with the dishwasher we figured you were a sought after intellectual talent <laughs> this kid graduated high school early yeah, I love it like, <laughs> I thought it's like a gift card from Amex like so I had all these like 50 cents on this car 75 cents and they just gave me my diploma exactly. <laughs> that was your credits no, uh, that's why Curtis was so hard on you like I know no, you're smart enough to do this job. Yeah. yeah, they just gave up on me. He was mad you graduated early. This fucking, this mental giant's in here with me. I'm going to show him. Graduated early from high school. You got a ringer coming in here to take my shit. Yeah, man. So, like, yeah. So, it was, so I just was transferring different school systems. They was just like, yo, you know, for us, 
you got enough so you know you can go your final yeah, yeah, semester yeah, yeah. and you can take a bunch of PE well, classes and be one of those things I was like I just don't want to come here yeah sure so yeah. I, I had also I, I got these jobs because I was trying to go to barber school Oh, so uh. I was working these two jobs but the crazy part about it was people didn't know that I graduated early so I'm running into people and they seeing me do these odd jobs. So they're so going they, around telling everyone they, you yeah, got I, fucked up. Yeah, that I, I dropped out and I'm like trying to take like, nah, I graduated <laughs> early. Like, oh, yeah, sure. So <laughs> hot from high school, yeah, China. Yeah, graduated early. <laughs> Some smoke yeah, show yeah, eating cheesy yeah, bread. See yeah. that Curtis yell at him? Yeah. yeah, I thought Chris Brown was so sexy yeah. in high school, but now I saw the Down Syndrome boy <laughs> yell at him at his lobster roll job. <laughs> yeah, and I remember like trying to, exp- I'm coming out because I was also making sandwiches at Publix. <laughs> It's got all this yeah. shit for jobs. Yeah, yeah, and I'm running into teachers, and they like, "Yo, are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, I just." <laughs> I'm like, "No, I graduated early." They like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> like Arch Manning. <laughs> Arch Manning graduated earlier and then went to the University of Texas to participate in spring ball. Chris said, you know what, I want to graduate and I want to participate in this program to wash dishes with the South Yeah! Yeah, I graduated early. I go start, start stocking shelves of Publix. <laughs> Yo, but for real, that's exactly that, what that it was. Back brace. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember running into people. They was like, yo, bro, like, you good? I'm like, nah, man, I, I graduated early. I'm just doing this. So I'm just saving my money to go to barber school. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's really shooting for the stars now, right? <laughs> You know Chris graduated early so he can build up enough funds to go to barber school? This is the kind of man that you want in your life. Exactly, right? So it, it was crazy, bro. Oh, like, man. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, like. You worked three jobs to uh, go to barber school. Yo, man. Like I, jobs. Yo, and then, like, to mention, like, I was doing that. Then I was, like, bagging groceries at Kroger. Not making this up, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you're, I had. Yeah. Well, you're trying to work at every grocery store <laughs> that ever existed? Kroger, you know what it was? Publix? Cause I just, it was crazy because I had just moved in with my dad, right? And uh-huh. my dad was like cold blooded. He was just like, yo, listen, you on your own. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah You right. got a place to stay. Like, I used to, he used to drive by me. I would be walking home. He would blow the horn at me, bro. <laughs> Like he wouldn't even give me no right. He was running a real like 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 military. Like he was in the military. He's like, yo, you a grown man, you living with me, you on your own. Yeah. You ain't paying rent. You got a place to stay. You know, you you figure that's out. We roommates yeah. at this wow. point. Wow, he's bringing girls home. Yeah, you out. see a sock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> Take your ass in the backyard. Exactly. I got a patio chair for you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, man. Real talk. So he's like, like yo, stop eating my food out of the fridge, dude. <laughs> <laughs> exactly though. He was cold blooded though. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Don't smoke my weed. Yeah. <laughs> All the shit. Yeah. It's funny. We were smoking weed together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. smoke weed. Together. He probably not gonna like this. Yeah. Uh, I'm throwing him under the bus. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, we did. And I remember once. I, I at this point, like my dad, you know, he's old military Vietnam vet. So I remember he used to smoke like old school weed. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. And yeah, I remember yeah. I used, I, he, exactly. And so yeah. I remember bringing him like some hydro and purple haze. And he was like, Blue he, mine. He, he's like, hey, don't bring me back none of that hot power <laughs> shit. Yeah, exactly. From the Viet Cong. That's what he was called. He's like that last weed was just too hot power. <laughs> hey, don't bring me none of that hot power weed, man. I couldn't sleep what last night. Give you in public. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> hey, what are you picking paid in public? <laughs> exactly. I mean, he's called a hot power. He's like, you mean the, the purple haze? The hydro? What you talking about, Pa? I get it. Hot power. Oh, hot power weed. Dude, that's funny. Yo, Vietnam vets. My buddy was a Viet- his dad was a Vietnam vet, and yeah. he same thing. Like just. Always had weed, just oh, yeah. ashtray, just full of like yeah, joints. Yeah, and he would just drink. like steal yeah. his roaches and stuff like that. He yeah. grew weed in the backyard. Yeah. But it was always that mild. Like, yeah, it was they mild. They probably you grew just... some nice shit in Vietnam. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. right? I mean, I beyond the murdering and you're, all your friends dying, yeah. probably if we're good, you know, a barbecue every now and again and some yeah. weed. Oh, yeah. I guess so, but opium, I think, was more than Oh, yeah, it was a lot of like, like, like heroin oh, over yeah, there, though. Yeah. Like, well, a lot of guys opium is like. How do you think we got over there? Afghanistan is like opium. Oh, that's right. Is that what Hashish? Come from too, yeah. I I think I'm not so. I, probably, yeah. but uh, opium. I know like a lot of dudes that were in. I have a bunch of cousins that fought in uh, mm-hmm. Iraq and Afghanistan. They, f- they like mm-hmm. some opium. I have a funny Afghanistan hashish story. So my buddy, uh, this is like probably about four years after 9/11. He comes up. My buddy from Philly comes up to New York, and um, I'm showing around a city. This and that. We go and we go to get some uh, like halal. Like, oh. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mid- yeah. That, that yeah. one cart in Midtown used to be the yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, and he goes, Oh, dude, I'm not eating that. 
those guys are uh, they're sending money back to the Taliban. I'm like, dude, you just brought you just bought a brick of Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> You're sending the most money back to Afghanistan. No, right? This guy's trying to feed his kids. <laughs> <laughs> you probably put more in the Taliban than he is. Huh? <laughs> sure. How much can he send back living in that car? Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh You're spending your hundred thousand dollar a year paycheck. About ninety percent of it's going to opium. Yeah, you exactly. got the Taliban in your pocket. Dude. <laughs> you got them on speed dial. <laughs> That's funny. That's exactly what's going on. Oh uh, shit. You a drug guy, Chris? At all? I, you know, I'm actually in recovery, man. I used wow. to. Yeah, I got like twenty years clean this shit, man. No yeah, kidding. Yeah. From, From weed, though. From weed? Are you being serious? Yeah, That's how we. Uh, yeah, we got you like yeah, that. We, well, you know, I got a lot of. Addicts and alcoholics in my family. So Same. I just feel like I caught it early, though. Yeah, but it was yeah. hard at first, though. Like, you know, admitting you got a problem for weed. Oh, sure. You know, going yeah, to yeah, test yeah, up problems, yeah, I was I like, kind of like yeah. keeping it on the low. Like, yeah, I like, didn't sure. want to tell people what I was yeah, like. But well, when you know you have a. Because pr- I'm a stoner. Mm-hmm. I'm an admitted stoner late in life. I'm yeah. 43. But yeah. I actually have used it for more mental sleep purposes and yeah. body purposes. Yeah. More so than like, I just need to not have to do anything all day. Well, here's the thing there's a science about. Marijuana now that I'm so just amazed by. Yes, yeah. like people know how to like like dose it out. Dosage is yeah. huge and like, now because that was the thing. Like you just smoked a bunch yeah. of weed yeah. and figure, well, see what happens. I think it's just personality type. Everybody's not yeah. an addict though. You That's know what true. I mean? So like, you yeah. were an addict because you was getting away of. You're, you would rather smoke than do things you needed to do. Yeah. That's like, addiction. Well, well, I mean, you know, it's funny. I, like, I come from a family of, like, functional addicts, though. So oh, if yeah, anything, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. like, if anything, we were, I, I was more productive on the drug. It's though. almost worse. But it was just my, addict. exactly. It was just the relationships, my thinking, you yep. know. Like, yep. it was a lot of relationships, just a lot of mood swings. And then every now and then you would do something that would kind of, like, be like, yo, because I played basketball in college and I was like, you know, just like, I, I just quit the team one time. Just kind of like. Just over weed, right? Not really over weed. It was just like, well, I just, it was, like, was just it was, like impulsive. Yes. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the escape. You lose your, uh, your, your motivation, your goals, all that stuff starts yeah. to fall by the wayside. Yeah, for sure. You know, I remember there was a big game. I smoked a lot of weed the night before. It was like a really, really big game. Yeah, that's and addiction. then I was starting and I remember I was just like out, out of, of it. it. Yeah. And I remember just letting everybody down and being in a halftime locker room and everybody knew like why we. We were losing it was just like yo why would you do that yeah. before but i just wasn't even thinking so it was just a lot of bad decisions yeah. coaches looking around like fucking chris yeah he, exactting. He graduated Cur- early yeah. coach <laughs> <laughs> i know right hey, get curtis on the line exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> and he brought, he brought somebody in for you i know uh <laughs> Chris, he's yeah, it. he's struggling. It. Yeah, hey, Curtis, come on in. Say exactly. no words. Exactly. <laughs> Marco manages motherfucker. He exactly. had to start him. Exactly. He just throws a bunch of soup spoons at you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And this was well, D three too. Though. Though. D3? This was D three too though. Like how you gonna mess up in D three though? You know what I mean? Come on, man. Like, it's like that's below JUCO. <laughs> exactly. D three is worse. I don't even like to talk about it though. Like. <laughs> I'm for real. <laughs> like, I like, see, we go back to the dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time it was. You're like, key three. Yeah. After I remember the that was just. Exactly. I remember one time there was this little kid. He was like, yo, I know you. He was like, nah, you don't know me, man. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring that up. <laughs> like, you play hey, at this College school? balls, college balls. Uh, exactly. I mean, especially if you had a severe. Uh, marijuana <laughs> addiction. <laughs> it's still pretty good that you made a D3 team. I mean, but D3, bro, is like. You think you could have been higher if you? Had I actually probably could have did like you D two. I probably could have did like D two. Yeah, yeah. I probably could have did. I'm gonna be honest, but I was okay. What yeah, yeah. You point guard, right? I was a point guard, yeah. but my basketball IQ, I didn't, I didn't really understand the game until my like yeah, uh, that's the, the, uh, junior year in college, though. Yeah. yeah. So I, I didn't have enough games under the whistle in high school. Yeah. To really understand the game, skill wise, I was okay. I was undersized. I was five nine. Yeah. But it was basketball IQ. Yeah. Like when you get to that D one, D two level, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was For lacking me too, that. In college, like that's the separation between, especially playing quarterback, like I did. That's yeah. The separation. Uh, you know, I'm a college Josh, athlete. Josh, uh, <laughs> met, bring uh, he's a quarterback. Every, every episode. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I snuck that phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, you play, you play quarterback in college? Yeah. yeah. Oh, where would you play? Yeah, talk D1, about it. We D1, never, D2, no, D3, no what? No one's ever heard about D1, it. D1, but it was, it was a small school. Oh, D2? Yes, yeah, D1 AA. Oh, D1? Oh, okay, yeah, 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 I got yeah. you. Okay. But uh, it's okay. not a... Uh, High voice. One year, one year, one year. And it came... Honestly, if I had a better... I probably could have been somewhere bigger if I had a better IQ. Yeah. But a football. People uh, don't understand that though. My dyslexia yeah. was so fucked up. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I would hide it because it was like the late 90s, you know? It was mm. no, 2000, 2000. Mm. Oh, okay, so uh, you were one of the first autistics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Neurodivergent. <laughs> but like, I remember one time 
uh, this is you used to have to read the signals from the like the coach on the sidelines doing yeah. all the signals. Mm-hmm. There's like three guys, and yeah, one yeah. of them is a real guy. Yeah. Oh, right, right. And I my dyslexia mixed up where because it was like a yeah. thing, right? It was a signal of what yeah. the route's supposed to be. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mixed it up, and uh, I threw a ball I shouldn't have thrown, mm-hmm. but I, I completed it, mm-hmm. and I was getting chewed out. Yeah. And rather than just like say, dude, I'm just dysle- like I didn't know what I was. Yeah. Right. Right, right, so I right, just right. got in a fight with the offensive coordinator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just got in an argument with him. Yeah. Right. Pull out. Yeah. Benched. Yeah, yeah. Like this, it always got in the way. It was always yeah. like yeah. they would send me to watch game film, mm. and I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, I think this guy's on the left. Like I would always yeah. fuck yeah. up. Yeah. Like the order of where people are yeah. supposed to yeah. be, just because of the way it's moved. I mean, now yeah, I know how huge. to like learn. Yeah. But then I don't know. I'm just looking. <coughs> I'm just going off instinct. Yeah. And that yeah. you can't do that at no, high yeah. levels. You're nah, fucked. Nah, yeah, nah, yeah. Nah, it's, nah. it's even at a D three. And, and another thing too about the Division three level is that because we're lacking the 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 the, the, the studs. Oh yeah. You know, everybody. So one thing is that I will say now is that I am I do have a strong basketball IQ because everybody we have to run six because yes. nobody is a, a five star recruit so nobody are you, still so, involved? Are you coaching are you involved in the nah, game still? you know I, I don't even play that much because for one I'm just scared to get hurt at this age but I do yeah, understand I tore my the game just doing fucking yoga yeah that's what I'm saying at I can't afford to get hurt man yeah, so that, like that I play horse money. you know what I mean <laughs> 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 I shoot some free you want a free throw competition how about that though I spin the ball you know what I mean on my fingertip I'm not finna be like crossing nobody up trying to dunk hell nah then on top of that like I have nothing to prove you know yeah. like a lot of these guys yeah, that are playing up until they're 40 thing in yeah I'm just it. like I've played I'm really tired of playing ball yeah, like yeah, I yeah, know yeah. who I am good shape too it's not even like you yeah, need to like it's something like, that like yeah. you, you can like stay fit I got some yeah. video I got some DVDs if I need to pull <laughs> yeah. something out and let somebody know what I can do yeah, me too. I still got some Don't game tape me too yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I recut them. I got yeah. the remaster. <laughs> the director's cut. <laughs> you got the music behind. You got mixtapes. He's got Quinny Man mixtape. It's the first quarterback mixtape. You got an N1 quarterback mixtape. Those old like '90s effects, like fucking Star Wipes. He's like, and as he's watching, he's like, "That's right. It's called the Checkoff mixtape." Every time I complete a ball, exactly. That's funny, man. What? Hey, so. What's a big comedy moment? I'm sure the album so far is like the biggest comedy mm. moment mm. where you had to go to a day job after you had the moment. Mm. Like, has there been a like a Cinderella moment for you yet mm. where your shit turns into a pumpkin? A word. Because you know, like people, like we've had people on that have to go do really cool things, mm. and, then and then walk then the next dogs morning, the next day, <laughs> the yeah, next yeah, day yeah. gotta walk a dog, or they gotta but go to the made, factory. But uh, so wait, I think we're jumping ahead though because now so. You were dish washing dishes, but then you went to barber school. I went to barber school because oh, you're a barber now. So the dream barber. did come yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I, I didn't mean, know I guess, that. I mean, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I always kind of, I just always wanted to have my own, bro. Like I just, you know, like you, you have your own, own barber shop. shop? No, just have my own like income. Oh, oh, I didn't oh. want to like work for nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my yeah, dad yeah. was self employed. Uh huh. And then I just saw like you oh, know, you just rent the chair. Yeah, I just rent the chair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that how that works? Yeah, I rent the chair. I've always. So what do you you pay by the day? I pay by the week. You pay by the week. Yeah. Then at one point, I worked. You know, I probably shouldn't say this. I worked in my apartment. You know. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And then, uh, if like, you got the clientele. Yeah. And then you know, I started doing TV and film work. Now, you know, I do TV oh, and film work right. too, though. That's you know right, what I mean? Right. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. you know, uh, sh- yeah, I, I used to. You know, I don't really like to talk about it, but you know, I used to be the the barber for Trevor, man. I was right. Daily Show barber. You know, wow. I cut his hair. You know what I mean? So like, barber really like took. So you me got to, skills. I mean, you know, that's nothing too. To be a celebrity barber, you don't have to have skills. Like, you just got to be cool to talk to. I mean, it's really just like luck, you know. Uh, like, it, I mean, like you you have to be skilled, but I think it's it personality type though. Yeah. Me and Trev yeah. did hit it off though. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, I would uh, imagine too. Yeah, right. Is there is there in the barber world like is there like dude that dude's a good barber or is it like no, no. He, everybody is there's like well like tattoo like artists like cartoon Mr. Cartoon whatever that guy's name is like remember back in the uh two thousands there was a tattoo artist and he just became everybody's tattoo artist uh-huh. there's a guy who was a jeweler Jacob the jeweler yeah. he became everybody's jeweler uh-huh. I know that's kind of the more rap community yeah. but I mean I have to assume when it comes to well, barbers barbering, it, like I don't really care like that though yeah, uh, yeah, yeah like yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. really been that type of barb I think initially when you start you have to have your skills now I can give you the best hair cut of your life but i was always the type of dude that was all about service uh-huh. being yeah, professional yeah, being yeah. on time yeah, yeah. not yeah, yeah, you know huge. getting you in and out that's huge you know yeah, not huge, you know you huge. know just like having good prices so like uh, i think people come to me for overall service yes. I'm, I'm gonna tell you straight up if you're looking for the best haircut i'm not your guy 
you but know, if you're looking you, for the best experience. Yeah, or maybe not solid I mean, haircut, a quality experience, decent experience, yeah, like yeah. relationships. It's funny. I used to even talk about that. I'm trying to work on uh, some jokes out about that, about how like you know a lot of guys when they promote on Instagram for haircuts. They showing like you know the best haircut. Come check me. Yeah. It's like I was like, how would I promote? Like I show a picture of me and a client. Like yo, I just helped him work out his relationship. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to come to me, you know what I mean. If you want to learn how to get your credit score up. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know, come come by come by and so, come see me, Dad. You know I mean, what I mean? You're from a, like, honestly, I think not only a good joke, but also like yeah, you should film that kind of shit. Like walking in. Yeah. Like the experience from walking in when yeah. you provide them. Yeah. Sitting them down, how they're talking. Dude, I like yeah. Yeah. Like, dude, I get it. In and out in 15 minutes. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like, like, I, seriously, if I come in at 10, I, I'm leaving at 10. You show them a chart. What yeah. experience do you want? Yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah. You're saying I can leave the car double parked. So. Yeah. <laughs> then on top of that, let me yeah. say, I work off appointments. I've always done on- online appointments you can book. Then on top of that, I charge for cancellation fees too. Oh, I charge yeah. if you're late though. Yeah, yeah. And I give you free haircuts if I'm late. I'm rarely oh. late though. But I've com- if I'm late, if I'm 15, 20 minutes late, I comp. But a lot of times, clients sometimes have a hard time with those cancellation fees. I've, had to, I've gotten to some issues. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I've made some enemies out here. I got yeah, you know? that's a new thing. I was just I was just reading about this that um, it's a new thing where um, that's risky to do that. That you but must you, have you a good also setup. give them a discount if you're late. Yeah, it's, it's, without a doubt, though. it's a balance. You're yeah. giving it out. Let me tell you yeah. something. And sometimes some clients would be like, "Oh man, no, nah, don't worry about it." I understand. I said, "Listen." You comp it. I'm comp you because if it was the other it way around, something. I'm going to charge you though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, I have no problem. If I'm 20, 30, if I miss an appointment or if you super, super late, you getting your haircut for the, you know, for yeah. nothing, you know. Yeah. So like, you gotta hold yourself accountable. Sure. Yeah. But yeah. that's really what I, I'm like. A I, I'm like a meticulous professional. People come to me because they know on a Saturday they can get in and get out. Yep. I'm gonna reach. I'm gonna let you know when I'm going out of town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got some good days and bad days haircutting wise. You know. <laughs> <laughs> the skill like, part. That's is That's not uh, what. Because nothing to a haircut is is. T- Temporary. It's not a tattoo. Yeah. No, That's why I get black, it. No, black, yeah, right. black people's hair because I'm Sicilian and I got some Sicilian cousins that have like mm-hmm. black people's kind of hair and mm-hmm. they gotta meet somebody that knows how to fucking cut yeah. that kind of hair. I mean, I'm, I'm good. That's a skill. Yeah, I'm good. Like, I'm okay. Yeah. But I'm not going to be, you know, I know some barbers that, you know, they're so meticulous, they doing all of this. It's like, I'm not finna, I, the guy that taught me how to cut hair was just like, he he was, he was like one of the best barber teachers. He's actually from the character from the movie Barbershop. Oh, the really? The session to entertain a character. Oh, shit. He, based was, on him? he was based off the guy that taught me how to cut hair. Wow. Oh, shit. Because they were coming to my barber school and doing research. Like, yeah, we trying to do this movie. Uh, Ice Cube was trying to do this movie about a barbershop. This was like 1999. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't think it was for real. But like that guy, like there's certain scenes where like the guy that yeah, so like, oh, I had a really good barber. She said, "You tell us like you're spending too much time on his hair. The, the hair is, 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 is it's gonna grow back. You know, like <laughs> yeah. quit wasting your time, man. You holding them hostage. You are gonna burn your clippers out. That man gotta go. So like he was yeah, just I love like the inside game. Yeah, right? he there's was just like, the game. He's like you being too particular about the cut, son. It's not that serious. You know, you're not gonna make more money if the hair cut. You know, like <laughs> he used to tell us stuff like that. So I was trained, and a lot of these guys. And then I, this was before social media, so yeah. like I'm, I'm, you know. But if I need to give somebody, like I've had times, like, yeah, if I've, you yeah, know, yeah. Trev's been like, "Yo, listen, this is gonna be, I right, cool, I can do that." Yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah. not finna be doing all of that. How though. is that yeah. when you're working for someone that is also in the, I mean, being on that show or being associated with that dude, yeah. At, Especially at that the height of his fame, and that's the only reason why it's I really, hard to bring it up as a like. Hey, I'm also doing jokes. Like, well, that's well, hard. Well, uh, the only reason why I bring it up now because I don't really cut his hair no more. You know, and it's well, like. But I mean, yeah. just in general, yeah. bringing it up for like you oh, can't bring it up to Trevor. It does mean. not work. What you're talking you talking about? Well, like he, if you're trying to get a leg comedy. up. Oh, well, no, like that's another thing too. You like, can't even talk about. You're there for business. You can't talk about a different well, business. No, well, no, that, that that had a lot to do with why we connected too, though, because oh. I was a comedian. But I never pushed that on him, though. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I know that was separate. See, I know though. some comics yeah, yeah, yeah. that don't know. Have nah, no and, couth. Yeah, I have no it's idea like how here's my tape. Here's my. Let me tell. Let me tell you something. And that was one reason I think why we had such a good relationship. Because you never blurred those lines. And I never like. I mean, we used to talk about all type of stuff. Like we, we used to talk about material. We used to talk about jokes, you know, like I used to tell him what I was working on. It was clearly just like the comp. It was like a relationship. It was just like basically having your barber be in the same field as you and being able to connect. Yeah. But nah, it was never that. And on top of that, like I also believe in making my own way, though. You know, so like it's like what I'm like, I'm not finna like try to. So like if Trevor saw you walking down the street, he'd honk and drive past type thing. (laughs) (laughs) Like your dad. (laughs) You gotta be a grown man. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Get your grown man on. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, and then on top of that, like when I first started cutting his hair, I really wasn't that strong of a comedian, though. You know, like I've gotten stronger yeah. over time, though. Mm-hmm. And there were a couple times where he would be like, "Yo, let me see what you were working on," oh. and then I would be like, "Ah," you yeah. know, because I really knew that I just wanted to keep that separate. I was his barber. You do comedy. I know you're on a high level. And it's just like, I got my own path. I'm not trying to. And then on top yeah. of that, I was always honest with myself about where I was yeah. at. Like, you can't do nothing for That's me right rarity, now. That's a rarity, but I think it's because of your age. Like, we're both. Yeah, we're age. up there, though. So but I'm not. You know, I, I have that same thing. And I think that gets in the way of sometimes of being successful for guys our yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know for a fact that it. a lot of people who are in their 20s and 30s. Yeah. In this era of comedy. Yeah. Have no qualms. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. Here's what I'm doing. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let me get the opportunity. And they yeah. think like that's the way it's done yeah. because that's what you're seeing on social media. Yeah. All these abrasive mm-hmm. people yeah. that mm-hmm. are so self-involved. Yeah. And I th- honestly think that's a middle, like I'm lower middle class raised, yeah. middle class now yeah, mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. talk about this on the show all yeah. the time. We as middle class, lower middle class feel Sense like we need to be better. Yeah, we yeah, need, yeah, yeah. We yeah. need to make it our way right yeah. now. Yeah. Like, yep, yep, yep. We, we have no, like we're, we're, we're always carrying shit we don't need to be carrying. Yep. I think it has a lot to do with how you how you view and how you care about the craft too though. You yes. know what I mean? Like I'm not doing this for fame. I'm not doing this for money. Like. I used to hear somebody say this, like the people that are successful in comedy and not the comedians that want to do comedy, it's the, it's the comedians that need to do comedy. Yes. I need to do this. Yeah. So like, I'm going to be now. okay. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I know, like I look hey, how at- how long it take you to figure that out though? Because it took me until my, to turn 40 to figure that out. I was doing it for the wrong reasons for a long time and now at 43, I'm doing it because I have to do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think initially I was doing it because it was fun. Oh. I think initially- When did you start? Hold. Uh, I started like at thirty, and that's how I started. Oh, so I, I started earlier than you, but that, but yes, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. so like I started. You were, a, you were a man when you started. Yeah, and I started the same way. I was, uh, and I hate to keep dropping all these names. I was cutting Keith Robinson's hair. You oh, know what right, I mean? yeah, yeah. So Keith was just kind of like, oh, you know, I remember I was like cracking jokes with Keith, you know, because I didn't even know so who it Keith was. Barber, being a barber to figure out you're funny. Well, I was always funny behind right. the cheddar. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. that was another reason why people used to come to me because, yeah, yeah. like, if I would get in the zone. Like I, oh, I, I, I was cut. messing people's hair up and they were coughing the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> they was like, "Yo, you messed my head up," but them jokes was right Man, though. <laughs> that shit was funny though. Yeah, <laughs> he like laughing and stuff. So <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. He's just sharing people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's just like, all right, uh, you got to be funny and you got to be good. <laughs> you can't do not one of. So I always was funny behind the chip. I think yeah. I've, I come from a family of alcoholics. Oh, addicts. when you're, I mean, hey, like, and then, I'm a family of alcoholics too. We're oh, all funny. We're all funny. Funny That's story time. And then being like coming from dysfunctional home, having to break the tension though. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, like if yeah, I don't yeah, crack yeah, a joke, yeah, yeah. yeah. this is about to be yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, like, I, joke is yeah. cracked, or someone's head gets cracked. Or just being from, I remember being a kid, like being so honest. I remember like I had two best friends growing up, and like we would get bullied by this guy, right? And we would be so scared. And then like, you know, it would be this quiet, like after this guy would be terrorizing us, right? And I would be the first one to bring it up, like, yo, bro, like, we was really scared, bro. <laughs> like, like, you see how scared we was up? I peed a little bit. Did you pee a little bit? I was always the one to bring up. Say the yeah, vulnerability. I, yeah, yeah, so like, I, I've always been the one that just kind of masked the uncomfortable with the humor. That was the only way I knew how to deal with things, though. So I was always, I think I've always Which been fucks you up. If there's no balance to that, because I was similar, it yeah. fucks you up in real life. Yeah. Like, when you're working a real, you, you, have, you have to do shit. real shit yeah, yeah, yeah. when you start saying shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've been at yeah. funerals yeah. and like, yeah. yeah. And like, so hold this a little closer to your uh, best next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think I've ever made anybody, you know, like OD. Like I'm, you know what I mean? But like, yeah, I mean, we're not like making anybody OD. I'm just saying, like, I've never done anything like that was OD. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, I'm going yeah, out yeah, the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I've always been like a comedian, and then I, I, I wasn't even a, a comedy fan though. I wasn't. Yeah. I didn't know anything. Like I didn't even know who Keith Robinson was. <laughs> like Keith Robinson. How like, did you find you? He just, it was like somebody I was working a in referral? this. referral? Yeah, somebody referred me because I was just a good quality barber. Yeah. He was somebody that needed a professional barber. He does good work. And you're doing house calls at this point? No, nah, I was working in this, this spot so called you were Bree Braxton. So was, you were wearing a, renting a chair then? Okay. Yeah, I was actually working in a nice little shop. It was like up upscale. And then I just was cutting Keith. He was like a comedian. I think he could tell I didn't know who he was, though. I was fresh out of Atlanta. I wasn't watching Comedy Central, none of that, I mean, though. it's like I you grew gotta up be, on, you got to be like a, a New York person to kind of know Keith. But you gotta really yeah. be in the comedy known, but like he's, you have to be into comedy yeah know. I didn't know who he was though yeah, yeah, I, you yeah, know, yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. I knew like famous comedians but I didn't sure. know I didn't watch comedy since that was quite right. the average person up. maybe now knows more but like yeah I'll give 
yeah, four comedians sp- they would know top of their head. Yeah, they, they, they yeah, don't yeah, know Keith yeah, Woods. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and so uh, I was cutting his hair, and then uh, I was like cracking jokes, and I, I could tell he was laughing. I was like, you know, you a comedian, I could be a comedian. You know, uh, you know, you know what I mean. And I remember Keith shut me down. He was like, Yo, bro, like until you get on stage, don't talk to me about comedy. You're not a comedian. Oh, nice. And I remember oh, it was kind of it was kind of oh, mean. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah, remember yeah. being like, because you know, you know, yeah. we we get that. Well, like, you know, we got people that's like, Oh, I can do comedy. That's kind of Keith's whole. Yeah, that's his thing. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, like you cross the line with yeah him. exactly like, motherfucker yeah. but it was real though and it was funny though and then i hit a bottom so i ended up leaving that shop <laughs> and I, I was in cutting out of my crib and i hit a bottom so low in life what happened well, in new york i was just financially it was just oh. i was the shop wasn't working i think the shop closed down i ain't had nowhere to go i i got into it with one of the owners it was just crazy so yeah. like i was at a low in life that yeah. like i was just like yo like that was when I started comedy. I was, yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, Most it was people's nice. choices. Do yeah. kill yourself for stand-up. That's right? where I found comedy. Yeah. yeah. Totally. The lowest, yeah, it's right? just like, yeah. like me bombing on stage Dude. is not the worst thing that could happen uh, in my it's life. It's euphoric when you're feeling down almost. Yeah. I, it's weird. Exactly. It's, it's detrimental out. in the beginning, but yeah. then it could be euphoric. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't figure out what to do, man. I was spinning out, dude. Yeah. So bad. I like... I was just trying everything, man. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Doing, yeah, were you dogs, already clean? Dogs, juggling, got the. Yeah. <laughs> were you thing. clean by this point, or you were? No, I've been clean since 22, though. You know what I mean? So I was oh, definitely clean. So you though. were clean, but you yeah. were definitely oh, feeling yeah, yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I would, let me tell you something. Like, I'm in recovery, man. Like, the, the disease changed faces, though. Like, you know. So, like oh, well, at this point, yeah, like I, I ran through all of my finances. That's how unmanageable I was. So I, <laughs> I was spending all my, I came. You know what I mean? And I was like, uh, I got into it. I, I like was messing around with this chick. That was like messing around with the owner, and then oh, he ended up. You got like, a love it, triangle? Yeah, it was like some love triangle, like. Bro, yeah, it you was got like with the ball and, with the owner. Yeah, I didn't know though, and yeah, like it's like you didn't know who Keith Robinson was. I didn't know <laughs> <laughs> he was I'm fucking her. <laughs> so I ended up having to leave that shop. Then I went to another shop. Then they, I, it was just a lot. So I was just down. Oh, that's the best. Yeah. So wait, so I want to hear so more all about the depressions. Hear more about this though, the love triangle. So oh, oh. how long were you banging this girl? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So she came into the shop, and that's how you met her, right? She was a client? Nah, so But she like, was coming around the shop if she's fucking the owner, right? She I, can't- I, I feel like I shouldn't even be talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> this I don't know. This is gonna I, be I feel like anybody that knows me going to figure this out, though. <laughs> you know, they're going to be like, no! Because like, yeah, it's yeah. not hard to go through my track record. Like, So if he wasn't at this shop... He was at this shop. I remember uh, she was working at this shop. So that's who it is. Like, yeah, if I what? ever blow up. If you give one solid time, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. it ruins the whole yeah. time. I'm already talking about Trev and Keith. Like, I'm trying to keep it clean, but, like, this is about to get ugly, Doc. I get a text like, yo, bro. I'm like, yo, we got we to gotta, we gotta trim this up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, we got to like, cut this up. Like, can I see that episode? It's my friend. I'm logic. I didn't yeah, exactly. fuck myself. Exactly. <laughs> like, I need y'all to sign these NDAs. <laughs> Did y'all sign NDAs? Yeah, yeah. So, hey, I, hey, I've been there, man. Yeah. It, banging someone around the job. We talk about this too every now and again. That is the worst, especially it's, if it's not an office job where there are regulations in place already. But it's at the time it is so oh, excellent. Oh, it is, it is the a dr- best. You want to talk about a drug? Oh. Fucking someone at the job oh. is a drug. On the down low, Ooh, it's on like the a DL. Oh. I used to have this uh, dude back in the day. I used to uh, this woman who worked at the fucking front of this uh, office I worked in. She was, she was like one of those people where she was probably about 20, 20, 21, and I was probably 22. Mm -hmm. And she was one of those people that was built to fuck on a lunch break. Like, you know, like those kind of personalities, Mm, like, yeah, yeah, I'll fuck in this car in the parking lot. Mm. Let's, one time we took a, we we pretended we got lost on a, some work thing Uh and fucked at her place. It was just like, yeah, you were meant, and she was, like trashy sexy yeah uh, but like young favorite. trashy sexy so it didn't yeah. look bad yeah, yeah, like, yeah i'm sure like when she hit 40 she's probably about 40 now oh, yeah yeah it caught up with her yeah yeah, yeah. but in that when you're I'm 20 sure i mean well, you're a silly dirtbag trash is trash when you like to fuck trash yeah you yeah, yeah, trash see how it ages yeah, yeah. yeah it's like wine yeah 20 old trash 40 old trash 60 old trash between like britney spears in the year 2000 and britney spears now that's what we're talking that kind of thing like wow that chick's unreal like everyone wants to be with her even though you know she's trashy and uh that was like I, I got fired for that. Mm. Oh, you got fired? 
Yeah, I remember the whole company shut down for like a week over it. Mm. Why? Because it was... You said I the company got shut down for a whole week. <laughs> the company they had to do an investigation. <laughs> I, I had a job where I just had started stand-up. Mm. This is probably 2000. Four or something like that. Uh-huh. Okay, you've been in the game for a minute then. A long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So back in San Diego. Uh-huh. And uh, it was just when websites were coming about. Like Dane Cook had just started doing MySpace, all, of, all that well, stuff. Well, like yeah, MySpace yeah. and yeah, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. his own website. Yeah, right? I remember all this that. Guy yeah. So we were like, age, yeah. so I had like a crew of dudes that, you know, I came up with in La Jolla for the, I was only there for a couple years when I moved here. But I was like, all right, let's, we should do this. Mm-hmm. So we got a guy to set up a website. And at the time, Blogging because you couldn't do video, right. yeah, was, yeah. But blogging, you could do it. Right? I remember blogging, you remember blogging? That was yeah. it, was, it was a site called Live Journal, yeah. yeah. Anybody remember Live Journal? Uh, okay, I think so I remember that though. Live Journal, you could put the you could embed it on the website, mm. it was one of the only ones you could do. So I embedded a blog and I just I never put anybody's name in it, but I would just write about all the things I was doing, yeah. So I started, I hated a few people at this job mm. and I started writing about them. And mm. then I started including the fact that I was banging somebody at the job. Mm. We were sneaking out to go bang. Mm. And, and all together? Well, well, no, I got in a fight. <laughs> yeah. I checked. Like they about to do me. I checked the dude at the job. He was, he did, he, he was like a fan, but then he tried to hit on my girlfriend. I, something happened where I checked this rich dude at the job. He's okay. like my age. What like do you mean a little by checked him? Like I said, if, you know, I called him out on something he had said to my girlfriend. In the blog? No, 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 face to face. Oh, face to face. And oh, okay. uh, he had come out to some of my shows. We were kind of friendly before this. And, and then, he, then he, had, he crossed a huge line. Uh-huh. And he was like, his dad was really rich. He was like using the clout from the dad at the job. He's just one of those dudes. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. So I checked him and I thought we were cool, but he read it and his girl, that he had dating someone while hitting on my girl in the job. Mm-hmm. And she was like a middle manager type at that job. Yeah. And they'd found my website. And I had said something about so him in the like website. So he like fucking put on like a little fucking Sherlock Holmes. Oh guy. yeah, he, but, he, but he did it. But his girl did it. Which he, his girl did it. His like girl did it for him, which was worse. Uh, oh, so he went home so bitching about told, yeah. hit on my girl. Yeah, gets checked for it. Yeah, goes and tells his girl. Yeah. who is inside with everybody uh, yeah. and shows. The higher so ups of this company, yeah, yeah. so she did that's it because what you need, that's what you need for it to like yes. shut down a whole thing like that. Yeah. Is, is the is the woman the the, uh, the scorned yeah, yeah, yeah. girlfriend? The scorned woman. He's got, yeah. he's got this, this form like like they got detectives. All right, so <laughs> this guy right here, he's the pyramid. This is the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right it's like surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my head. Yeah, right. Like, no, this is Capo. This is the little girl I'm fucking. <laughs> Capo. Now if we get him to snitch, this whole thing comes down. <laughs> It's a house of cards. Baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they told, like, I got called in. At one morning, I showed up to the job. Everything was sh- all of a sudden. I get a phone call. Come to this off. Come, and I'm like, I feel something's up. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you then think? This, then this dude's brother, <laughs> who yeah, I met, crazy once. walking in. Do you ever have a job like you walking in? You're like, man. I can, you can shit. feel it. They're looking at yeah, you. Yeah. But because I had so many like blackouts at like work parties where I come in the next day, like, oh, I did some fucked up <laughs> shit last night. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> but the worst is you had written about everyone in there. So you walk in and they all know because they've oh, all read it. Oh, shit. So they gave it to everybody. Say, so all read all this. Sh- I had yet to take the website down. Oh. Because I didn't know this had ha- happened. Oh, man. So I get to the office. They call me in. They tell me all this shit. They're, and they're being hard on Like, they're going in on me. Mm-hmm. And I could tell that they haven't read everything yet. And I knew, like, I didn't put anybody's name in this shit. Mm-hmm. So they could say whatever they want to me, and I just kept my mouth shut. Because mm-hmm. uh, I knew I was going to get a lawyer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so a Lawyer up. So uh, the dude's brother, he calls my phone. He doesn't work on the office. Mm-hmm. He's a guy I'd met, like, twice. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the dude who I was talking shit about called his brother. His brother was, like, this fat kid. Mm-hmm. And he thought he was a tough guy. So he called me on my work phone. Mm-hmm. And he's like, so I heard you've been... I go, yo... Meet me at the job, or don't call again. And I hung. Now I knew like that was the dude who ratted, right? Because uh, his brother. Oh yeah. So I saw. I waited for him to go into the ba- like the bathroom. Good fellow. I know, right? So Jimmy that, Conway. I, I knew it was his <laughs> ass. Yeah. So I'm wait. So there was this long corridor where there was a glass door, and then this dude's office on the other side of the corridor. So I sat by the before they called me in the office. I sat by the glass door where he couldn't see me to see when he was getting up. He goes into the bathroom, the men's room. I follow his ass in there and I shut the door behind me and I look under the stalls. There's no feet. I'm like, all right, 
we're going to do it here. Because I knew I was about to get fired. Mm. So I'm like, why don't you say he was washing his hands with his back to me? Mm -hmm. I go, you... I go, turn around. Why don't you say this shit? Your brother called me. I know this is about, turn around. Yeah. He's like, I didn't do anything, man. Mm. He would refuse to turn around. Wow. Yeah. He refused. <clears throat> he almost backed up and walked out so yeah. he could get out. Yeah. I had to let him get out. Wow. Because he refused to look at me. <laughs> and then I went home and I called the lawyer and then I, I, when I went back in that office because they made me come back in to have another chat with them because I think they assessed what their yeah. options were. Yeah, yeah. The dude who like was talking all that shit, the head guy, yeah. different attitude because he knew like I, my lawyer had contacted yeah, him. Yeah, he yeah, knew right. like There's he a, had nothing yeah, on yeah. me. Right. When I walked in, he was like, "If you're recording this, if you have like a device on you." <clears throat> That was smart, though, to lawyer up, though. Hell yeah. Dude, Always that's, lawyer up. That's a wild fucking story. Because mine man. was like, uh, yeah, we broke up, and then we just didn't talk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it I was know. just a little uncomfortable. I know, right? Yo, I went in there, and I said- <laughs> he, could, he could write a movie about this. <laughs> 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 I had like two lines. I, I, my shit. Yeah, yeah. I, sat, I sat in the chair, and he goes, so what is it going to take for you to leave this job? I go, uh- if I don't get three months severance, I ain't leaving. I'll show up every day here to work. Yeah, make this, make he this. goes, you know everyone, there's a lot of people here who don't like you. I go, I'll show up every day to work on time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Showing up early. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. As long as I can be crazier than you, yeah. I'll win, bro. Yeah. I'll figure out a way to win. That's, that's real, though. That's really. See, and I got you out of your jam. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I had to take over and tell yeah. that story. Yeah, I know, so you right? had to talk about fucking girls at the barbershop. Right? <laughs> yeah. You ever get laid at the shop? Get in nah, the nah. Not but, in that scenario? Okay. Nah, nah. I actually, I remember I, I remember when I was living with my mom when I was in Atlanta, before I moved to New York, I, I used to have, everybody had the keys to the shop. So sometimes I used to bring women to the shop. Oh, like go late, there after late, hours? Yeah, late night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, after so most of the time, because, you know, they had like a little like a little break room. Yeah. And uh, most of the time, it's just women, they just wouldn't be with it, though. You know, it was just like. Too much hair. Yeah. <laughs> or they was just like, I would, I mean, you know, I'd make a move and you could just tell they weren't, you know, they they would just want to chill. I guess maybe it wasn't comfortable enough. Or they yeah, just, right. They're sitting in a bar, but they're like hyped up. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no. Yeah. Chris, Chris started like, pushing that lever to get him. <laughs> Chris is like leaning in. He's like, slowly the chair is lowering. I'm over here using it. like, yo, this is too much. Put the cape around him. <laughs> you don't get no drool. <laughs> Chris, for the drool. <laughs> Exactly. I'm here like five stars. TripAdvisor for experience. Exactly. <laughs> Putting on a radio. <laughs> exactly. Splash a little of that blue. Hear that blue <laughs> shit? I know, right? Combs. <laughs> you, 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 you need to dis you need you need disinfectant afterwards. <laughs> I got antiseptic what you need, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is really good, you know. <laughs> oh my God. So what what's the uh, what's the plan with the the, al the album's out? It's the on serious, right? The what else is going serious. on now? Uh man, just trying to get on the road, man. Yeah. Trying to get on the road, uh, and just trying to put together more material. I want to, you know, I'm working on a podcast too. I'm trying to put together something. Um, I got two rooms. I do. I got to get you up too, though. Oh man, I do a Monday oh, free show. That Monday room is great, dude. I really? do a Monday yeah, yeah. free What's it show. Called? It's called Comedy at Alki. It's at this bar called Alki, right across the street from where I live at. Hell yeah. yeah so I great. do. I got these two rooms. So I'm really just at this point where I'm trying to be as self sufficient as possible. Yes. I, you know, I know, like I'm just trying to create my own stage time, create my own work. Podcast, create, I produce my own albums, you know, produce my own specials. I just want to be as self sufficient and mm -hmm. independent and just try not to, just like you say, be beholden to anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's really, because we had to, we older now too. Like, I, yeah. I'm too old. we 42, 43 to be trying to ask somebody for yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Like, we can put yeah. things together, you know what I mean? Dude, this is all driving past your friend and just honking instead of picking him up. <laughs> <laughs> that's I can't even tell you how much that stuck by me. Like my, because I have that with my dad. Like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. you just you, you do. figure it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's hard for me to it's hard for me to talk to comedians that are just kind of like just waiting around and well, complaining. You it's know what a mean? different. That's what's so funny is we talk about this a lot too. Because you know Ed's older than me even. He and he started later, so mm -hmm. yeah. he's actually in the same phase as a lot of young comedians that have this, and he doesn't have it. Where it's like, oh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna make this internet shit pop. Yeah, 
and until uh, that's what I'm going to focus on, right? Yeah. Like you could be on a, someone's couch, you could be living off whatever, but yeah. I'm just going to make this internet. Like now people are really focused on the internet and I, I'm with like the work of it, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I really I'm, like yeah. to, to build my self Yeah, yeah. Like, I like to know. figure out how to do this right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even though there's not a whole lot of reward right now for doing it right. But, but that's another thing too. I think, I, I see it like that though. Like I see that's like, my reward, I, yeah, right? I see comedy just like I see barbering. Like you know, like if you just focus on putting together a quality product, mm -hmm. you know everything will will people. It's just the proof is gonna be in the pudding. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Then on top of that, like I'm not necessarily doing it for the for the fame or the clout. As long as I can do it. As long as I can, you know, just have fun on stage. Make a little money. Exactly. Make a couple of dollars, you know. So, like, uh, and then I think it does pay off. No disrespect to the comedians that was, you know, trying to win the algorithm lottery. Yeah, you know, yeah. Right, no, right, no, right, that's right. a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lottery. It's a lottery. Yeah. And you know, it's just, before we were on air, we were all talking about, like, how it, it just hearing us talk about the algorithm. And yeah. I was thinking to myself in that moment. We don't know shit. Yeah. You really don't. I mean, everyone can act like they know. Yeah. There are probably two people in the world that actually know yeah. how, how to the, manipulate yeah, it. Yeah. I don't think those people at Instagram know how it yeah. works. And then, and then it can change. Like, yeah. they can yeah. change With the rules. The drop though. of a hat. Exactly. Yeah. And then on top of that, like, this is why I really like you guys' podcast. Like, oh, this well. is... This is y'all got a really good thing going, man. Like, this is... Thanks, man. I know, Thanks, like, bro. I know it might take some time, but this is... A quality podcast. Right, Everything from the theme, which I'll talk about, the chemistry, you know. Mm -hmm. Like this, it might take some time, but I, I if I was somebody, I would tune into this though, you know. And so like because the people like we like you we have on people yeah. that <laughs> are scared to talk about all the dirt they did at their job, <laughs> but we'll reference it and make us think about it. <laughs> I love that shit. You're per you're right on brand yeah, for know, us. Right? So good, dude. So Plug good. where you're at, Chris. Yeah, yeah, Tell everybody you? where can they find you. Uh, you can find me at uh, Chris Brown Comedy, uh, Instagram, Chris Brown Comedy, Facebook. Uh, come check me out, Comedy at Alki. If you uh, Monday show, Saturday show, Saturday we sell tickets. Monday is a free show. One uh, Eleventh and Seventh Uptown. Uh, West Side Comedy Club, Stand Up New York, Rodney's, and uh, yeah, man, you know. Hell yeah. That on, dude. Yeah, definitely. Uh, JoshAcardo.com, at Josh Accardo. We have big dates coming up. Hartford, Connecticut, August 9th and 10th. We're also going to be in Westerly, Rhode Island. Uh, so make sure you watch out for those tickets. They're coming out soon, too. Awesome. Follow me on uh, Instagram, Ed McGowan Comedy. Go to edmcgowan.com to see all my dates. Uh, email us. If yes. you, uh, email. You know, if you ever worked at a Publix or you ever washed dishes, send us some notes. <laughs> you ever had a Down syndrome guy who outranked you? <laughs> <laughs> Send us a message at uh, workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. We'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.